did you allow this to happen? Now, if I want to have children, what type of impact do you think that would have on my children? Like, if anything happens to me, they can literally just drag me back into this place and then I'm at risk. Like, why would you do something like that? So I was really, really frustrated about that. And it's just interesting that my focus was on children and having children at that time. And I was aware that I was about to have a child. Lo and behold, the next month, this is when I got pregnant and I had this child that I was feeling all this time. I felt this child coming through and um, it was really interesting. Now this was interesting because even though I was expecting this baby to come, this baby that I've been drawing, that I've been feeling, that I've been, you know, like in this energy of experiencing, I was aware that this baby was coming, but physically it was just like, when it all came out, it was just like, whoa, okay. So I remember exactly when he was conceived and I remember just the intensity of the energy that was created when he was. So, and I remember exactly when I did, um, when I felt him come, like in the whole process. So I was aware of my body. I was very in tune with my body. I was very aware. I was very in tune spiritually. And I was very in tune with the child that was coming through. Um, and lo and behold, literally five weeks later, I'll find out I'm pregnant by a pregnancy test. And I remember like just turning and just being like, I'm pregnant. And it's just like, well, why are you shocked? <laughs> and I'm like, because I just didn't expect it to like physically come into being. And I remember it was just very intense. And I was in a state of shock, but still really excited at the same time because I was like, wow, it's finally coming true. I, I just remember feeling an element of, but how is everything going to play out? Like, this is just like, whoa, okay, like a lot of info and a lot of experiences in a very short space of time. So being in this space, I noticed that it was a bit weird for me until I reached about 12 weeks and that's when things really got really dark for me because I was feeling excitement, but then I was still, there was still an element of I'm entering the unknown. Um, there's so many things that I'm not stable right now and I was living at my mum's and having a baby, like I had nothing to my name because I'd lost everything. I'm having to rebuild everything. And it was just, uh, it was just extremely anxious. It was, it was extremely, it was creating a lot of anxiety for me. And this is where I also noticed that things really started to play out on the other side um, with my partner in terms of, in terms of the depression that was impacting on him and I was realizing we're both going through this together but it was hard for me to understand exactly what was happening at the time because I'm dealing with all of these hormones all of these changes and I'm like okay where are you and he's there and it's just like whoa okay how do we deal with this um and so it was incredibly intense and I remember the the anxiety that would come through my mom and my mum, one of the things that she was a hypochondriac about was gestational diabetes. And I don't know if it's something that she had experienced personally, but that's something that she was like, you, do, you don't want to eat too much. You don't want to eat too much sugar. You don't want to eat too much this. You don't want to eat too much that. She just didn't even want to eat too much full stop. So she had actually rationed me on my eating and I could only eat at a certain time this much. And that was incredibly like stressful for me because I'm growing, um, I'm pregnant, I'm going to be hungry, I want to eat, I want to do this. And I'm being put in all of these restrictions by my mother when I'm a 28, when I'm a big 27 year old woman. So that was incredibly like crazy for me. So being in this place was really dark. Imagine I'm in my parents' home. I don't agree with them. I hardly really speak to them. Things are really, relationships are really strained because of what happened with the whole mental health situation. And there's something that I don't think can ever be fully forgiven because of the actions that they took and because of the, um, and because of the lack of accountability that they've taken in this whole situation. So I'm having to literally be biting my tongue and dealing with all of that living in the home at the same time. And it was incredibly straining for me. Um, 
imagine being at your parents' house during a relationship and so like you can't you can't you can't really you can't really be at home having your partner there or having your partner there well you can but it's just like it's just not the same so you don't have that sense of freedom it's like you literally going back into the mind of a child again and being in all of these restrictions and these limitations and I was like I'm really not here for that where I've literally been living by myself independently for how long I don't deal with just being thrown into a bag of restrictions and limitations like that so whilst I'm trying to manage my own personal mental health I before right before this has all happened I've created my own practice my own routine of how to deal with my mental health, deal with my spirituality, um, just my own little routines and practices, whether it's, you know, having a, whether it's doing a meditation, whether it's doing intentional magic man manifestations, you know, writing something and then burning it at the end of it, you know, they will see that as witchcraft. And I could not do none of that. I could not light a candle. I could not light an incense. Anytime it's lit, it's like, take those demons outside. Don't be bringing those demons inside. Take you and your demons outside. And it's like, really? It was just a lot that I had to be dealing with. And I, I did not deal with that very well. And so it took me into a very dark place um, where I felt that I wasn't able to be myself. I wasn't able to tap into my intuition as I was able to do before. And that was a very disabling place for me because my intuition is something that I rely on a lot. Um, not even just my intuition, just my inner voice. If I don't, if I'm not able to hear my inner voice, that's a very unstable and vulnerable place for me because I can't hear myself. I can't hear my inner guidance. I can't, I'm not connected. And so where I've just come from a very heightened, spiritually awakened experience i was literally going through another stage of my awakening through this experience and this has happened and i've literally just been dropped down to rock bottom where i don't even know how to connect back to myself again that was a very dramatic shift and a very disabling shift for me that i i really had to find some grounding and and find my way back from that because i knew that if i kept on that train i would have gone deeper and deeper and darker and darker and i probably wouldn't have survived and it's understandable looking at the experience that I went through in the mental health hospital um, and, the types of the, and the types of experiences and the trauma that I was exposed to in those places. Any normal person who goes through that type of trauma probably would not come out okay. And so I think I'm doing pretty well <laughs> considering um, because, you know, just being able to get yourself back on your feet and, 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 and even purge and not even attach yourself to the trauma that you've experienced because even though that I've, even though this has happened i'm not holding myself to everything that i've lost but i'm now just focusing on everything that i can gain and everything that i can experience going forward like this was just an experience that catalysted me to understand what is it that i want um really solidified the clarity and direction of what i want to do and where I want to go and just even understanding who I am and what qualities and what gifts I had this experience really allowed me to understand my giftings because in this process I really had to dig down and just um utilize them to the best of my abilities like the, my abilities just came on like that like I had to just they came on the, it's, it's it's almost like instinct when you instinctively do something and then you realize oh that actually works and so this was really intense for me because understanding how trauma is transferred um, generationally through the mother to the child, I was, I created even more anxiety for myself being pregnant, not wanting to pass on the trauma, but also still holding on because I didn't want to cry too much because I didn't want him to feel my pain. If I cried and I'm crying a bit uncontrollably, I'm feeling guilty because I'm like, no, I don't want you to, I don't want my baby to feel that. I should only have to feel this. And so I felt my, found myself having to overcompensate for him whilst being pregnant, but then I'm still in a very unstable place at the same time. And so it became very difficult to deal with and manage at that time. The truth is what I was really experiencing was fear. It was just the fear of unknown. I didn't know what was gonna 
play out and the way that things was happening at the moment was not how I had envisioned things to happen. So because things was not playing out by the plan that I had, by the plan that I had in my mind or how things would normally go when you're having a child and, you know, how society likes to portray out, like, you know, like you look at, especially, I think what didn't help me is that I was on YouTube a lot of the time binging at other, at other women's birth stories and pregnancy stories. And, you know, I kind of, even though everyone didn't have a positive experience, I feel that I had, I felt like I had an idea of how I expected my experience to go and because it didn't align to that. It, it threw me off a little bit. So then fast forwarding onto five months pregnant, this is when social services decided to randomly get involved in a case that didn't even involve me. But because of what happened with the mental health system, they're using this as a justification to use it to come against me. And now say that I wasn't fit to be a mother. Bear in mind, I haven't even had my child yet. You haven't even given me an opportunity to become a mother. This encounter was extremely stressful because after I'd left the mental health institution, they were still trying to come around and like, just leave me alone. And now I'm pregnant. I just really just need everyone to leave me alone. Just let me be in peace and recover from all of the debauchery that you guys have just launched onto me. Like, let me just heal. So I didn't want any services to be around me. I didn't want to be dealing with any services. And then when social services came, it was like, that created even more anxiety because I'm like, wow, are these people are really going to try and take my child from me threatening me with a section 41 saying that I need to make sure that that um that I, I need to allow them to do an assessment and so on and so forth I'm like you guys just need to leave me alone and and I actually refused that assessment and I'm glad I did because now they're actually off my case and they closed the case altogether because they realized there was nothing for them to investigate in the first place but it was just the anxiety of I'm five months pregnant and you guys are you guys are and you guys are enforcing more anxiety on me that I'm like I'm I'm a human being I can only take so much and it's like they were literally trying to force me into a place where I would just give up and I was like no I'm determined not to because these people are expecting me to and I refuse to give them what they're expecting so I guess that's that resilient part of myself that's just like no you're not I'm I'm not gonna let you be satisfied with you trying to do whatever you're doing like I'm gonna make sure I I got me okay so going through that the next month is when I actually received his name and I was getting anxiety because I was like, what am I going to call him? What am I going to call him? And initially I actually thought he was a girl. Um, so I was, I had girls, so I had girls names and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that's the name. Um, but then when I found out the gender, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we got a little boy now. What boys names do we have? <laughs> and I didn't have any well I did have a few but it was nothing that was really kind of ticking with me and then out of the blue the name came through Shiloh and I was like wow that's a beautiful name um and it resonated with all of the things that had come to me about the meaning of his name and just the energy and just the whole and because he was actually going to be a Pisces as well all of that water energy coming back, I was like, wow. I even named his second name after water. Um, it's a, the Hawaiian name for water. And I was like, yes, like water needs to be in your name. I just got this whole energy of peaceful warrior. Like he's going to be a peaceful warrior. He's got a very worrying energy, but he's very loving at the same time. It's like, you know, like water can be very calming, but it can be a tsunami at the same time. <laughs> like that's the type of energy I was getting with him. And I was like, wow, this is, this is going to be my change and like when you end up having a Pisces child in itself that is the manifestation of happiness and love and all that type of thing and I was like yes this is what I'm going to be manifesting for my life and he is just like uh he, he is my abundance like I literally started seeing him as my abundance so I started in, so I started like really just aligning my perspective to that and then this is when I started really looking into essential oils and aromatherapy for, just for looking into balancing my own emotional health, my own mental health, um, and also preparing myself for when he did come so that I could literally learn how to be like a first aid holistic mummy, <laughs> you know, not using like 
chemicals and stuff like that, I really wanted to make sure that I didn't fall into the cycle of this generation of not understanding how to use um, natural herbs and natural medicine for healing. Um, because normally, like when you look into Caribbean families and stuff like that, you know, you've always got that Jamaican remedy, old Jamaican remedy or whatever that everyone uses. That's something that I didn't really grow up on. So I'm having to make sure that I compensate for that knowledge and make sure that my, ch my child, and make sure that my child actually comes out with that knowledge too. So I wanted to, so I went on that journey of digging deeper into aromatherapy and got my qualifications. And also just looking about how I could prepare myself for labor. So I was getting my lavender, I was getting my geranium, I was, I was just making sure I was fully prepped. So they were supposed to do the court case the year before, but because they had section being hospital at the time they wrote a letter to say that I wasn't fit enough to testify and that got me so mad because I had been preparing myself for this moment for so long um I didn't want it to be carried out another year it was already like two years at that point and so going through this was really interesting for me but I, I knew I had to go through this before I had my child because that was a door that I just knew I needed to close I'm in court literally testifying against the person who abused me when I was younger. I'm nine months pregnant, could drop at any moment. Literally, I'm on a stand, I'm feeling dizzy. I'm literally feeling like I'm gonna pass out. It was very, very intense for me. And I just remember saying to myself, regardless of whatever happens with this court case, I've done something really major. I've closed a door that not many people do close. I've spoken up. Um, I've done something that I know my family would not do. Um, because it's something that was discouraged for me to do when I spoke out about this initially. So around this time of the court, I started having these dreams of, and it was a recurrent dream of the same thing of me going into labor, but I didn't remember giving birth to my child. Like my child was just handed to me. And I was, I remember this created so much anxiety because I was like, oh my gosh, is something going to happen to my child? Is it going to get taken away? Like, I thought it was going to be some kind of obsessed thing where someone steals my child in the hospital or whatever. Like so many things just go through my mind because I couldn't figure out what that meant. So it's interesting when I go into the labor story, looking into what that actually meant. But two weeks later, this is when I actually went into labor and I went into labor um, on his dad's birthday, but it was actually Mother's Day at the same time. And I, rem <laughs> I remember being like, feeling these contractions, but not knowing if they were contractions or not, because it just felt like period pains and just Braxton, normal Braxton hits that you would get, but they were a bit more regular. So I remember not saying anything for the first couple rounds, um, couple rounds, probably about a whole hour, I didn't say anything. <laughs> and they were coming like every 15 minutes. Um, so after a few times, I was like, I think I need to say something now. <laughs> then I said I was in labor. I then I said I thought I was in labor, but I was like, it's not close enough yet. So maybe I should just stay put. So the long story short, I ended up in labor for two days before I ended up going into the hospital. And that was crazy in itself because my contractions were going up and then going down and going up and then going down. I was like, what the hell is happening? Are you going to come or not? Like, just hurry up. And so ended up going into the hospital and they go in going in there and the thing is I was really anxious about going because I needed to go in because at this point I really needed some pain relief because the pain was because because the contractions were starting to get a bit intense at this time so I decided let me go in but I did notice like there was some kind of decreasing of movements as well so I was like let me go in I don't want to I didn't want to chance anything so in going in they found that they couldn't monitor his heart properly um it kept like coming off and then it was really slow down like really really slow and then the midwife was just like right you're going in and she checked me and she's like yep you're only one centimeter is dilated but we're gonna have to admit you and i'm like okay cool so at least that's one step out of the way <laughs> and then um they kept finding this whole thing of they couldn't detect his heartbeat and then it got to a point where they were like okay we're gonna try and see if break your waters this is day three at this point you're probably exhausted um let's see if we can get this speed let's see if we can get this sped up so they spent literally and i exaggerate not like probably about 
an hour and a half like trying to break my waters and they didn't and it wasn't able to do it and in the process of them trying to break my waters a midwife is passing out at the same time and I'm just like what the hell because it was very intense you know and imagine it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life like <laughs> it was like everything was in slow-mo because I was on gas and air at the same time <laughs> so I'm having these contractions I'm taking gas and air these people are trying to break my waters and this midwife is passing out I'm like what the hell this is a movie like only me it would only have to be me and then shortly after my mom came in and she passed out as well and I'm just like well this is just really not going well for me at this point so then Time went on and they were like, okay, we really need to get this sped up because his heart and whatever. And then they, then I remember it, then I remember his heart like really low. And then all of these doctors come running in. It's like, yep, yeah, right. So you're going to have to sign this C-section. I was like, what, what, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like this was not in the plan. Um, like C-section wasn't something I wanted to do. I mean, they had spoken to me about doing an elective C-section before because of my fibromyalgia and I didn't know how it was going to impact on my body. Um, knowing that especially um, very stressful situations does trigger my body in crazy ways. So they, I didn't want to do that. I really wanted to give myself the opportunity to have an actual birth and actually have a water birth as well. That was, was, that was my intention. So... In them coming out, it was like, whoa, like, whoa. And I remember looking at my partner and I was just like, whoa, like, like, this is not okay. Like, I didn't sign up for this. And I remember, like, the fear that I felt, it was just, I've never felt that much fear before in my life because it was, like, in a split, like, in such a short space of time, I had to make this decision. Of, it wasn't even a decision. It's like, yeah, you need, you need to see such a um, and it was something that I just didn't want to do. Like, so I literally had to prepare myself for a C-section in the space of like probably about 15 minutes. And I was just, I was just so scared. I was so scared. And at this point in my mind, this is where all of the anxieties that I tried to, that I had tried to suppress at this point, because throughout especially my labor and my pregnancy I kept like doing this whole thing where I was like I would distract myself from negative thoughts that I would have and this is a theme of postpartum and even that antenatal depression where you where you have a lot of fears you literally create scenarios of the worst things that could happen in your mind and then I literally had to be talking myself out of these scenarios that I was creating in my mind and just being like nope it's okay it's okay but when the C-section came in, I was, all of that just went out the window and I, I had no control. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Is my baby going to be okay? Is my baby... Then I had to keep going, no, he's going to be okay, he's going to be okay, he is okay, he is okay. It was just a crazy mental battle that I was going through in that time. So I remember being in the theater and I was like, wow, this is a lot and I've seen c-sections on tv so I know exactly what they're doing even though they've got this sheet up and literally I couldn't take it anymore I was literally throwing up on the table I was like can you just give me a moment give me a moment they did not give me a moment and I was just I, I didn't know what to do at this point and then I just remember he came out and he was silent and I was like Please tell me it's okay, please tell me it's okay, please tell me it's okay. And I'm trying to look around, I can't really stretch my neck. Um, they're trying to stitch me up at the same time. And I'm like, please tell me my baby's okay. And literally, the first five minutes of his life, he was not breathing. And they were spending time, like, literally trying to sort him out. And he had the cord wrapped around him twice. So this is why he was having a lot of the distress. And I was like, wow, this is so crazy. And it really annoyed me because I was like, hold on, you guys gave me a whole ultrasound you telling me you didn't know that he was breached like it was just like so many things was going going it was just like so many things just happening and I was just like wow this is just really really crazy and shortly after the c-section um I remember being wheeled out and I was just I I was out of it I was so out of it and I remember them placing I remember them placing my baby on my on my chest and this was something that was really intense for me because 
the biggest moment that I craved for was to have skin to skin with my child for the first time after childbirth. That's a that's an image that I'd held myself to for such a long time. Um, I constantly replayed it in my mind. It's something that I looked forward to. One of the things that made me feel extremely guilty was the fact that I could not do that with him properly when he was first born. So even when they put him on me, he was on me probably for about two minutes and then I literally had to turn, give him back to his dad and just be like, you're gonna have to take him. And I went to sleep. And that made me feel so guilty. And to, even, to this, even to this day, it's something that I feel I'm still trying to heal from because I didn't want to, again, I didn't want any type of trauma to be impacted on my child. And, you know, that whole disconnection when they're born, like it's really important to make sure that you have that connection when they're born and stuff like that. And I really just wanted to have that. And I couldn't because I was, I was recovering and my fibro started playing up. So I was literally in hospital for an extra week and a half after this or a week, I can't remember how long, but I was in hospital um, for a while after birth and I couldn't really do much. I couldn't move. I couldn't change my baby. I couldn't, I could just, I couldn't even feed him. Like, and one of the things that really got me angry was the fact that he came out at five pounds 15. So all of the anxiety that my mum was putting on me with regards to gestational diabetes, I felt even more guilty because I was like, oh my gosh, I've been starving my baby. Like they thought he was going to be like seven, eight pounds and he ended up coming out like five, five pounds 15. And that's still like a, okay, decent enough weight. But I was just like, imagine like that, that's only there because I actually stole food and you know, like, so it really made me so angry about that. And these were all feelings that I, I had to learn how to transmute. Mm -hmm. Then literally that day that I gave birth, I blew up like a flipping balloon. Like my hips were out here. Like I remember turning to my partner and being like, look at me, like, look at me. Like what the frig has happened to me? Like if I did not feel the same at all. Like I felt so unconfident with myself. I looked at my face and I remember that he actually kept spraying, like I had actually created sprays um, for like aura sprays for the, um, for the labor, just to make sure that the aura, the energy in the room was all set and clear. But he would spray it on my face and my face completely rashed out and broke out in a rash. So I spent time like literally trying to get that, get my skin back in order and like just getting, trying to really get back with my, trying to get back with my confidence of myself. Like my body had completely changed after birth. Like I wasn't saying, I couldn't feel the same anymore. Like I couldn't wear clothes, like the same clothes that I had even when I was pregnant, I couldn't, couldn't even like wear cause I'd got bigger. I, I had to deal with a lot of those issues at the time and it was incredibly intense. So one of the things that I really regretted was <laughs> not sleeping enough beforehand because, because sleep deprivation definitely caught up with me postpartum and that really played into my moods to my ability to feel myself to um, baby was literally waking up every two hours so I wasn't really getting the rest that I needed and I was still trying to like study and things at the same time or just keep my mind occupied because one of the things that really really impacted on me was was just the fact that I felt that my life was just immersed in baby zone and that was extremely uncomfortable for me because I've been living my life like my life for all of these years and now my life is literally surrounded by everyday baby changing, feeding, breastfeeding, this, that, da, da, da. and I was like, okay, I need a part of me to be coming back to, like my life is not all baby. And I think it's really important because obviously when women have babies as well, like when you're pregnant, you know, the attention is all on you, but when it's gone, but when the baby comes, it's like, okay, people don't care about you, it's all about the baby. And it's like, Okay, I need to find parts of myself that makes me feel like me again, rather than just a constant food supply and, you know, like, and a bum changer. So, like, I literally didn't feel myself. Like, I completely lost my identity. Um, I couldn't tap into myself anymore. People were still messaging me, like, can I have a session? I was like, boy, I need a session for myself right now. Because <laughs> I'm really, really struggling. There were so many dramatic changes that I didn't expect to happen. 
um, it, everything just came out of the blue. And even though I did have an idea of what motherhood was supposed to be, you can never really prepare yourself for when you actually fully do enter it yourself. And one of the things that really got to me, especially as he got older, was the fact that he really was so connected to his dad. Um, like he's become like a little daddy's boy and now he's kind of like he flits between the both of us but I felt really guilty because I was like because I haven't really connected with him so he's connected more with his dad so I felt that was my fault and I had to just allow myself to release that and be like no it's okay like he's he's got a relationship with his dad like you know he's gonna be he spends more time with me because his dad's at work so you know like he doesn't really need me at the moment he doesn't see his dad in a day so he's gonna be wanting to go off with his dad so it's nothing it doesn't mean it doesn't reflect negatively on me so i really had to sit down and absorb that and really deal with that within myself and one of the most irritating things was the fact that i couldn't even go to a mental health professional because of the experience that i experienced i didn't want anyone to know what i was experiencing because i didn't want the fear of anyone trying to take my child away or trying to put me back into the traumatic experience that i literally just came out of like, I have to be serious here. Like, literally, guys, my life was literally at threat in these hospitals. Like, the level of craziness that went down in these places was completely unbelievable. So taking all of that trauma into when I've had my baby and I'm trying to now become a mom and really move my life forward. So going through this process of trying to deal with all of these traumatic issues and dealing with the trauma that I experienced in birth. It was a lot and I felt extremely guilty. I felt there was so much that was wrong with me. I felt that, I felt guilty that I couldn't even connect with my child the way that I, I knew that I was supposed to. Like, I loved my child completely. Like, I, I really loved him. Like, there's nothing that could take that away from me, but I couldn't feel the deep motherly connection that I was expecting myself to feel. And I was like, well, what is that? Like. I should be able to love my child. And that's what postpartum depression does. It's like, it's that whole disconnection where you feel, you literally feel guilty for all of these things, but it's just the trauma that you're having to transmute through. And I must say like right now, like our relationship is just so beautiful. And every day, like I look at him, his smile, just even the way that he communicates with me now, he's only 18 months and he's now communicating with me. He's, he's, his characters come into life. Like, our relationship is so, so beautiful and it's completely different to how it was um, when he was just born. Obviously, now he can communicate with me, but it was just a lot going through those transitions and accepting these transitions that I was going through. Like, I really wasn't happy with the, I wasn't happy with where my life was currently because I knew it could be so much better. And I really think I struggled more with postpartum depression than I did antenatal depression. Because like I said, as he was born, there was all these fears of what could potentially happen. Like SIDS was one of my, oh my gosh, SIDS, I was terrified of it. Like I couldn't, I had to keep looking in the cart to see if he was breathing. And because I knew some women of where this had happened to as well, I was like, I cannot be going through this. That I constantly had a fear that he was going to die, he was going to get taken from me. But again, this is just the inflicted trauma of the social services and mental health playing their parts. And that's something that they still need to take accountability for. They have not taken any ounce of accountability for any of what they've inflicted onto me and my family. I remember my memory started to deteriorate and you know everyone knows about baby brain but I feel like baby brain literally affected me in a really interesting way to where my dyslexia has got a hundred times worse. I really really struggle with spelling and reading and reading the right things and writing the right things like my brain is the complete disconnect that's going on at the moment. Um, I also had some struggles with my back as well, so I wasn't able to do a lot of things, and I think a lot of that was from the epidural. You see all these things about postpartum snap back. I did not snap back. It's only now I'm snapping back. I've lost a lot of weight in the last 18 months since having my baby. It's taken me 18 months to begin to snap back. Um, I went from I went from being a size 16 prior to pregnancy as I was losing weight again, um, and I went all the way up to a size 22 the day that I gave birth. Now imagine that. So I literally had to work my way over the last 18 months as getting myself back to a 
back to a weight where I can feel comfortable and where I can feel like I can express myself a bit better. That that weight was really uncomfortable for me because I couldn't really move, I couldn't wear anything. Um, and that was probably the worst state of my life at the time. My weight really shows on my face first. So it was like, it just was completely out of proportion and I completely hated it. And I had to learn how to uh, really come into that. So onto my transition of how I was able to come out of this place. This whole thing, and people need to realize that babies really do impact relationships. And that's something that it really did do with my relationship with my partner. Um, understandably so, a lot of transitions that took place in a very short space of time and it was a lot for us to kind of process everything that was happening especially where he had to take on a majority of the caring of the baby when he was born he had to stay in hospital with me for like literally a whole over for literally over a week um changing baby feeding him waking up all of those times and it's expected of him to be able to do that because i'm not okay at that moment but no one's really looking into the mental health of what he's actually experiencing. And, and this is something that we've had to heal through over the last 18 months. And we had to actually reach out to professional help just to get some advice on how we could actually practically deal with this. And we had to deal, and we had to do a lot of conflict rituals between ourselves that were so empowering just so that we could understand the perspectives of what we both were experiencing in a, in this experience that was shared, but felt very individual at the same time. And I'm so grateful that right now we're in such a better place where we can handle this a bit better, but it was not easy. It was very, very stressful. And I literally said to him, I'm about to upgrade and I'm about to upgrade extremely quickly because that's something that I do. I go through these, I go through these intense transitions like every two years, like, and it happens very, very quick. It's a very quick upgrade. Evolutionally, just like, whoa, where'd she come from? <laughs> But I was like, I'm about to go for a very intense upgrade and it's going to happen very quickly. You can meet me there or, you know, we're just not on the same page. So then I was like, I just hope that I'm able to meet you on the other side. And that's one thing that I'm really grateful for is having a partner that is just as committed to personal development as I am. Because if that was the case, then this would have not worked. And you can understand why children can be one of the reasons for breakups and relationships and stuff like that. It's very intense and it's a lot of pressure on everyone. And one thing I had to realize about dealing with the relationship and with my life, like I'm a Venus and Taurus, so I need to be able to feel like I can have emotional security and financial security so that I can feel like I can conquer every area of my life. If that's not there, it's really uncomfortable. So then I had to look at all of the problems that was in our relationship. I had to look within myself to see where in myself that, where, where in myself was the reflection. Like, there's things in ourselves that we end up projecting into our reality that plays out through our partners, through our relationships, through situations, through friends, whatever. Like you always have to look back to yourself and see what is it that I'm projecting? And I had to look back at all of my unhealed issues and realize I need to take responsibility for this evolution as a woman. You know, as a woman, we are the upgraders. We are, we are the ones that create the evolution just like how we do in birth where the state of you are ends up influencing the state of your lineage. So I wanted to make sure that the state that I was at was going to impact the rest of my family. And it did. It impacted it in such a massive way that as I started taking these strides, everything around me just started reflecting that. And my relationship started reflecting that. And it completely changed around a lot of things. Just by me changing my perspective and stop trying to blame things outside of myself, victimhood was one of the serious things I really had to deal with for me to really come out of where I was because every I realized that I kept attracting victim situations that didn't make me feel liberated or adequate or anything so I just had to start letting a, letting go of a lot of things just so that I could open the door for what I did want but I also wanted to focus my energy into what I wanted to do like I wanted to focus my energy on where I saw myself like I needed to see myself beyond just being a mother even though I had just acquired this new title this was not all I was this was just an aspect of who I was so, so I had to then go on this journey to discover what else do I have in my toolbox 
who am I? What can I bring to the world? Like, what else can I bring to myself? What else can I feel myself with? So this is when I really went on the journey of going down and really digging down into my studies and thinking how I can optimize my business so I can launch it back. Because through the process of everything that happened with this mental health thing, my business suffered. I had to temporarily put that on pause and I lost all of my business equipment so I had to rebuy everything there it was a lot of stuff that was going down so I literally had to rebuild myself from scratch I literally felt like giving birth to my son I gave birth to myself I gave birth to I gave birth to myself so that I could begin to understand myself from a new perspective like I felt like I literally become a child we literally share the same Saturn both in Saturn and Capricorn so we're going to be learning a lot of the same lessons, you know. As he's growing in this world, I'm also learning how to connect back to my inner child through him and really heal my childhood issues through my experiences with him as well. So it's a lot and it's a beautiful experience. Motherhood is something that is the most rewarding experience you can ever have, but it's also the most challenging experience you can have. And it's important to know that there is no handbook like no one's got this right. No one knows how to do this. We're all just blagging it. You know, even though some people want to act judgmental on certain things, like, you know, we're all learning this journey at the same time. And I think it's important to really be aware of that when it comes to new mums, because even though you may have had 10 children, like that, that mother needs to experience certain things for herself to be able to understand what type of path she's going to create for her children. You know, it's okay for everyone to do things differently. I've done a lot of things differently with my child than a lot of people would have normally done. But that's for me to choose. Like, I don't want my child to be vaccinated. That's my choice, <laughs> amongst many other things. So that's a little bit about my story, but I wanted to be able to give some tips to those that maybe go through postpartum depression at the moment or may know someone who is. But these are some tips that you can give to them just to kind of help them through this process. Tip number one is make sure that you go out. I really trap myself in my home because I was dealing with a lot of social anxiety. So it's now, it's only now that I'm trying to get myself out a bit more, getting into more networking events, meeting with more mums and stuff like that. So make sure that you're really getting out and connecting with other mums because even when you have certain conversations with other mothers, you realize actually, you know, I'm not alone. I may be feeling some of the things that everyone else is feeling at the same time and you don't, and you don't feel as guilty because you realize it's actually normal. So definitely try to get out a bit more. Tip number two, make sure that you have time for yourself, like, and do whatever you need to do, like whether you need to experiment in some clothes, like do like a, do like a little dress up if you need to. I didn't really play in makeup a lot when he, when he was just born, like I would have a few days where I would do it and whatever, but I realized that was really empowering because makeup for me, like it's something I've really created. I really find it therapeutic, like applying makeup and stuff like that. So for me, that was a form of therapy for me. Find a form of therapy for yourself that you can do at any time in your own, in your own home that's not going to cost any money. Tip number three, also be aware that your partner is also going through this as well. So just as much as you're going through the mood swings and hormonal changes and everything, you know, and sometimes it's very hard because you're in the midst of that, it's being aware that your partner is also going through this as well. So if there may be some things that may be coming up where he may feel disconnected, where he may be going through his own changes, like just be aware of that you're both going through this change together and that some of the things that is happening isn't necessarily directed at you, but it's just a result of the circumstances that is happening at the moment. Tip number four, make sure that you strategize a plan between your partner, between your support network, especially right now I've relaunched my business so I need some time by myself um, I need some time away from my child so that I can focus on my business and focus on some work focus on sessions so so we actually have a joint calendar so where we put in dates it's like okay I'm doing this I need some time off in this so you're gonna have, to have him at this time or whatever but it's also being able to strategize that around your network around your village around your family around your friends so that it can make it a bit easier to be able to get some of your time so you can reclaim your time, reclaim your identity, reclaim yourself and not feel like your only job is to be a baby changer all the time, okay? <laughs> Tip number four is always opt for help. Sometimes we retreat into ourselves and we make things much more harder than we need to. Sometimes we realize it's not as difficult and not as crazy as we had imagined in our head. So definitely ask for help. People 
there are people who are there to be able to help and make sure that you seek therapy make sure you speak to someone make sure you don't hold this inside yourself make sure that you journal make sure that you speak to your partner make sure you speak to a doctor make sure you speak to a counselor just speak to someone that you feel that you can speak to someone that you feel that you can speak to but i really do advise that you go to a counselor and to a therapist so that they can help you to work through these issues a bit more effectively tip number five journaling journaling is like my ultimate go-to because you can actually journaling is an amazing tool it's, it's it's like your own form of therapy in itself you can actually see your triggers you can see your projections you can see your mindset you can see the problems that like you can see everything right there you can identify your red flags all these kind of things everything is right there so journaling is a really powerful tool to be able to use so definitely make sure you get yourself a little journal make sure you write daily write how your day was the little things the big things everything just keep a track of everything so that you can look back and look back at your personal growth and be able to celebrate yourself actually at this point this is how i was feeling but right now this is how i feel right now like wow this is amazing even if you notice a little growth and little changes that's that is amazing in itself don't always look for the big things always remember to look out for the little things too focus on what expands you rather than what restricts you so becoming a mother sometimes yeah you know, you've got a lot of restrictions you can't really do a lot of the things that you were doing before but if you focus your energy onto the things that is going to help you expand whether it's projects whether it's studying whether it's you know doing a youtube video setting up a youtube channel or whatever it is make sure you do take some time to focus in to the ways to expand yourself away from just this only being a baby changer okay i know i keep saying only being a baby changer because i really don't like changing nappies <laughs> i really don't like it especially now that he's eating solids and my last tip is step away from situations mentally so whenever these fears and anxieties come up like find something that can distract yourself that can literally just take yourself away from where you're mentally exploring it currently that is not beneficial for you so start thinking of something else like put something in place find a trigger word so this is going to be a word that you use when you're feeling a bit anxious so that so that when you get to that place where you realize you're being anxious that's your trigger word to bring you back so whether this so whether this word could be butterfly so you realize life is forever changing so whenever you you go for anxieties you're like butterflies 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 life is always changing life is always changing so you're distracting yourself from where you are and you're trying to project yourself to where you want to be so that's a nice little trick for you to use just one more tip and this is for those that want to support those that are experiencing postpartum depression whether it's your partner whether it's your sister whether it's your daughter just try to be as supportive as you can um calls may not help all the time because i remember sometimes i just didn't even have the energy to pick up my phone sometimes i didn't even have time to send back a message but i what i really did appreciate sometimes was you know but one of the things that was beneficial was people actually organizing time to come and see me because i didn't actually have a lot of people come to see me um but i really really valued that but i also valued my solitude time as well because that's something that really made me dig deep because postpartum depression really made me dig deep into myself but i really did appreciate the connections that i did have with people you know bringing over some dinner sometimes we can't be cooking all the time like we're tired so that little dinner that you bring over this is really beneficial you know being able to ask what is it you need you need some shopping go out and do that for you you know the little things that help it doesn't always have to be the big things but always look for the little things at the same time so that was a little bit about my experiences um i'm hoping that me expressing my experience is beneficial to those that may be going through this at the same time um i'm really this was a lot of therapy for me, um, just speaking about this at the same time. Uh, my partner came in at some points and was listening to it at the same time as well. So it was just interesting me expressing it and him being able to hear it at the same time. If you're going through postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety, just remember that you are never alone. There's plenty of women, one in 10 women who experience this at the same time. You're not going crazy. Do not feel guilty. Just understand that you're just going through some process. Please help and if you ever do need some assistance please reach out to me i'm also a therapist as well so you know i'll be happy to be able to assist you in whatever processes that can assist you and it which and in whichever ways that i can um i also would advise that if you can get a doula really get a doula that would really be beneficial that's something that i really wish i had um 
during the birthing process, I ended up having a postpartum doula, um, which can be beneficial at the same time, but I thought I really needed a doula throughout the whole process. Um, but you live and you learn, and if I ever do go down that road again, which I'm not really too sure of right now, um, then I know what I can do next time. So if you'd like to know more about my therapeutic services and what I do with regards to personal development and astrology, you can check out my website on www.soul-reconnection.com and you can book yourself a session over there. But if you like this video, please remember to like the video and to make sure that you share and subscribe to the channel as well. I'm really grateful for all of the support that you guys have been giving me in the short time that I've started my channel. The growth has been immense, the support has been beautiful. So I just ask for you guys to just continue to keep supporting me. And yeah, just keep watching the space. There's so much that is coming in store and I'm just excited to share it all with you guys in due time. But I've been talking for a while <laughs> and it's time for me to go get some dinner, prepare myself a baby to come back home so I can put into bed. <laughs> so until next time, I'll see you guys on the other side.